Yes, you do. One day the tortured stand up and revolt against evil. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I love that song. Anyway, welcome, folks. This is the Balls to the Wall Freakers. Freakers Balls to the Wall show. Uh, yeah, the Moose Girl is out on the town listening to the horseshoes and hand grenades down there at the local club in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. So I'm sure she's having a great old time. Hopefully. Oh, I'm sure she is. I, I don't know why I even bother saying hopefully. She's having a great old time out there in Eau Claire. Anyway, welcome everybody. It is November 1st, 2019. Yeah, we rolled on into the uh, second to last month here uh, of 2019. Yeah, we're, we're getting up, rolling up to 2020 really quickly. And uh, also, by the way, uh, just to remind you all, this weekend you get your stolen hour back on uh, 2 a.m. Sunday morning, uh, so Saturday night, Sunday morning, depending on where you are with all that stuff. But you get your hour back that they stole from you, so uh, and then they'll steal it again, and then you get it back again, you know, how it works, da 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 da, da. Anyway, <laughs> so don't forget tomorrow night to set your clocks back. One hour. Uh, yeah, that's that's the way it works. Fall back. Uh, anyway, so uh, welcome to everybody out there listening in all the various places you may be listening in from. And that would be right here on RealLibertyMedia.com on the Freakers Ball show page. Or possibly, if you're on the video there, video stream, you're on Vaughn.Live slash RealLibertyMedia. That's the source of our streaming broadcast there for the video stream. But if you're on the audio stream, you could be any number of places. Uh, and uh, that would be right here on reallibertymedia.com or rlmradio.xyz. Uh, maybe over there on uh, realliberty.org. <laughs> I keep wanting to say Freedom's Network, but they're down. They've been down for a little while now. Uh, Hopefully they'll come back. It all depends on if Bo ever checks in on his account over there and uh, says, hey, hey, something's not working right. <laughs> uh, anyway, but, you know, all the other places that we're at out there, Internet, Radio, TuneIn, uh, Shoutcast, all, all those places. So uh, welcome to y'all out there that are on uh, the radio stream. On, uh, but, uh, yeah, come on over to the video stream. It's cool. And you can jump on into the chat here on uh, reallibertymedia.com. Uh, and through the little chat applet there on the page, or uh, you can use your own IRC client. That uh, that works better if you have one of those and you're familiar with IRC. So uh, anyway, welcome to all the folks here in the, the chat room on uh, Real uh, Liberty Media, or uh, here on irc.freenode.net. That's where it takes you. Yep, we got a we got a we got a, a nice group of folk here, bots and bodies, as Mister Flash somebody. Likes to say, bots and bodies. We got the barman and uh, Beetle, Beetle, uh, Cowboy Tech, and uh, myself and the Moose Girl is still logged in, although she is not actually here. Uh, Mr. Anti and Asmodeus Asmo. Uh, we got Chalcedony and Echelon and Miss Gramsy. By the way, thanks once again, Miss Gramsy, Grammy, uh, Grammy Mary, and uh, Mr. Vincent Easley, Vinny. For your monthly financial donations to Real Liberty Media. Highly appreciated. And uh, they always come in on the first, so uh, I, I always like to make sure I go through and, and say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your wonderful support. Uh, we have uh, the Java Doctor and Meister Brow, uh, the other half of Vin E, the Ponder Gander, Poopster and Prince, and uh, who did their show last night, the Power Hour. Poopster and Prince, along with their cohort. Miss Kate, who uh, on Monday, by the way, on Monday, Miss Kate is having a birthday. So, happy early birthday, Miss Kate. Yeah, baby. Uh, Rose is here with us tonight. The Vanna Whitebot. Ain't she lovely? Uh, we got the weather dork and wood man, Mr. Woody, Meister Brow. Or is he still down there doing the Comic-Con show? He's a, he's a, like a security guy. He does all these various uh, events over there in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, so I think he's still probably at the Comic-Con uh, for this evening. Uh, we got the Phantom and the lovely and wonderful Miss Brighton. 
Yes, uh, good to see you. Uh, CC66 Choscura, the cyborg and noodle, half bot, half human. <laughs> cyborg. E Man, Ensive, Fumpy, Gromit. Uh, JJ's, the Scottish boy. Yes, how you doing, JJ's? I saw a little thing, uh, JJ's, over on the tweeter there. Uh, about a broadcast you were doing earlier over there on a webcom radio. Cool, man. Just Edie. Wow. I think it's your first time here. Uh, welcome to Real Liberty Media chat here. Just Edie. Uh, we've appreciated your music here on uh, Real Liberty Media on the Freakers Ball. So, um, yeah, wonderful stuff. Uh, I, I, I dig you. All right, we got Kiss and uh, the real Donnie Wu. Uh, we got Mr. Sock Puppet. Uh, didn't I say Rome's? I thought I said Rome's. All right. Rome's. Yes, he's here. <laughs> Sock Puppet. Slim uh, Jim uh, Flim. Uh, howdy to you. The spot has uh, bought the holiest of Rogers and uh, Zipix. Oh, what a crowd. What a crew. Yeah, that's, that's a cool, cool crowd we got going on here all tonight uh, in this all, uh, this little place that we have. He got finally, finally got stoned. Well, hopefully you didn't miss it. He got stoned and I missed it. <laughs> no, not that. All right. So <laughs> anyway, uh, what can I tell you about my my personal goings on here in uh, downtown Moriarty this week? I, ha I had a little issue. I had a little issue with my uh, my Jeep. Uh, this week, uh, a couple weeks back, I, I put new spark plugs in there into the Jeep, and, uh, and I hadn't really done much with it, driving around town and stuff, you know, but uh, this week I, I had to go over to Edgewood, and uh, and uh, once once I, once you rev, uh, the, I was revving the Jeep up to above the 3,000 RPM mark, something happened, and it wasn't, it was like cutting out and blah, 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 making noise, and then the little engine light thing came on. And I was like, oh, what the hell did I do? So I figured I broke something. Anyway, so I ordered. I went on to the Amazon.com there, which uh, you can do there on RealLibertyMedia.com. You just click the little Amazon button, and we'll get a little, little little tiny slice of whatever you buy on Amazon. We appreciate that when you do that. That's It's, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, and anyway, so... Um, <laughs> So I went out of the Amazon thing and I and I bought this onboard diagnostics little tool thing that just plugs into a port there underneath the uh, dashboard, which, which all all your cars have those little ports there to plug the onboard diagnostic tool into. Anyway, so it was like twenty bucks, and it came in and it told me, hey, you got a problem there on uh, cylinder three is misfiring, and I checked everything you know externally before taking anything apart again, and I figured I, I did something. And I, because I had read a bunch of stuff on the interwebs about this misfiring issue, and it was kind of, some of it was kind of scary. Uh, anyway, most of it, nothing too scary, but uh, you know, stuff that you might have done doing what I did. Uh, anyway, so then I finally uh, found it was cylinder three there, and I uh, went there and, and I pulled off the uh, ignition coil bar. It's a bar that instead of like using spark plug wires in a distributor, it uses this ignition coil bar that sits down over top of your spark plugs there on, on these uh, 4.0 uh, straight six engines. Uh, and anyway, so I pulled the uh, the bar off there and I looked, everything checked out. And I took out the uh, spark plug there on cylinder three. And apparently I must have done something when I put the plug in because I'm pretty sure I checked the gap on all the plugs prior to putting them in. But this one, it was smashed down. Uh, so that the uh, top of the little thing, the little bendy thing that goes over top of the round thing that sticks up. <laughs> I don't know the names. Anyway, the, the little part, the little arm that comes over, uh, it was it was like micro, micro gap there. So I regapped it, and I put it back in there, and I put the little tool in there, and I reset the codes so that the uh, little engine light thingy would go off. And all's good. All's good. No more of that, that crappy... Starting, you know, like, woo, woo, woo. And for just one plug, one plug with just a, a misgapped plug to uh, make it run, uh, perform so poorly. I, I was kind of surprised by that because, uh, I mean, I don't know. I've, I've run cars throughout my life that had probably horrible plugs and never really quite had that problem. 
But I guess it's different, you know, with uh, fuel injection and all the stuff the Jeep's got on it. Anyway, uh, I was highly relieved to get that working and normalized again because it's like my only form of transportation. <laughs> anyway, so so I know you're all highly interested in, in my stories of what's going on here in my life. <laughs> yeah, like a dead cylinder, except not all the time, Cowboy Tech. A dead cylinder above 3,000 RPM, uh, <laughs> which... You can only drive uh, below 3,000 RPM for so long, and that's just around town here. Uh, and once once you try and accelerate to, like, get on a freeway, yeah, that doesn't turn out so well. Um, so, anyway, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> oh, man. All right, now, um, last week, uh, Miss Brighton had expressed a, an interest in calling in. And uh, if you want to call in here on to the balls to the wall slash freakers ball show um you know, what you're going to need is wire uh and on the main menu there on real liberty media.com uh the the one thing at the at the far right end says get wire i do believe that's what it says i'm not looking at the page right now and to the best of my recollection, that's what it says, Get Wire. And if you click that, it'll take you to a page. You download this little program called Wire and install it on your computer. And you have to have a, a microphone. Uh, and, and it's best to have a headset, but, you know, what, what, whatever. Um, so if you install Wire, and then you can uh, send me a uh, connection request. Uh, I am the at symbol Grimnir just like it is there in the chat room uh, and everywhere else you may see my name listed. So if you want to do that uh, and send me a connection request, I'll I'll connect you up and I'll put you into the uh, Freakers Ball group and then we can talk there on the radio. It would be cool to talk to you. It's been so long, you know. Uh, and that goes for anybody else that wants to talk, you know. Uh, if you want to talk just ED2 uh, or uh, anybody else new here that uh, doesn't know how to get to the wire, uh, so that's, that's what we use. We use wire instead of things like Skype because wire does not spy on you. It is secure. It is encrypted. It is, it is private from the NSA's prying ears and eyes too because there is also a chat there. And it also has video thing, but I, I'm not doing video. I don't even have a camera hooked up to my computer at this point in time. Um, so none of that, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we can talk, uh, there, uh, on that. And I can also put you into the big RLM group, RLM one group that has, uh, quite a, quite a few people in it. Uh, so you can chat to everybody at once if you want. That's, that's all something to do, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a cool application and it, uh, is very low resource usage and, uh, unlike the Skype thing. Uh, so it's so many advantages over using Skype, uh, using the wire is uh, just better all around overall. Um, anyway, I think that's everything. Let me see. I'm thinking anything else I got to tell you about. Um, yesterday was Halloween, and um, last week was the Halloween show here on Fingers Ball. Uh, there may be, and I'm not saying absolutely positive for sure. There may be a few leftover Halloween tracks, leftovers. You know how much I like leftovers, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. So there may be a few leftover Halloween songs in, in tonight's uh, show. Uh, so, hey there, Vinny. Uh, good to wake your butt up, man. <laughs> All right, so let's play some music here. Um, and... Uh, and uh, we'll 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 get to some interesting stuff after that all where are we at here where are we at here we are here we are here we are okay so uh enjoy these i'll be back after this set <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love End of Green, man. <laughs> They're such a good band. Anyway, um, 
<laughs> that song's a uh, degeneration, dead generation. Uh, not necessarily a Halloween leftover, but I did put it in there because of the video uh, for the for the Halloween show. But we didn't get to it as uh, things happened. But uh, what, what a great song! What a great band! Uh, anyway, before that, Mister Gary Howey covering Carlos Santana, "Evil Ways," and uh, doing his uh, Linus and Lucy song there at the Funky Biscuit on uh, last, uh, oh hell, last Saturday, last, last Friday, last Thursday, I don't know, the 24th of uh, October there, down there in Boca Raton, Florida, and we kicked it off with Alice Cooper's Poison, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, a new release of that video too, by the way, uh, so yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah, very nice, very nice stuff, uh, huh, uh, huh, uh, huh. <laughs> Oh, if you can't tell, I uh, I enjoy music. Yeah, I do. It's a uh, it's one of my what's one of my what's one of my passions. Um, although I'm not very good at playing it, should I ever have to come across that kind of thing. But I am very good at listening to it. <laughs> I t I tend to listen to it almost all day, every day. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, I, I, I dig the tunages. Um, you know, you know. So, anyhow. <laughs> oh, man. Fun, 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 fun stuff. Ah, ah, ah. Got an itch, got an itch, got an itch. Oh, all right, there we go. Sometimes I get these itches. Ah, all right, anyway. <laughs> so there's that. Oh, man. So uh, let's see what's going on over here in the chat. If there's anything I need to address, I don't think so. Um, ba 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 ba. Everything looks good. Everything looks fine. Everybody's having a good time. All right. So let's see what kind of news, uh, news type stories we got lined up for you. And since uh, we're talking about Halloween and uh, such things, we'll start off with this one here. Ron Paul, Doctor Ron Paul frightens trick-or-treaters by jumping out and telling them about the national debt. <laughs> Lake Jackson, Texas. Sometimes adults will jump out and scare children with creepy costumes or presentations on climate change. But former representative and presidential candidate Ron Paul came up with a new tactic to frighten trick-or-treaters jumping out and lecturing them on the ballooning national debt. A little caveat coming up here. As the first trick-or-treaters rang his doorbell for the evening, Paul leaped up from his front door and cried out, The national debt is rapidly approaching $23 trillion. Well, here's a little caveat. I saw today that it had passed the $23 trillion mark. The kids were frozen in fright with their candy bags extended, their eyes wide in terror. Uh, this has at least three dire effects on the country. Higher taxes, a weaker U.S. dollar, and the cycle of increased borrowing to make up for the expanding deficit. You see, the Federal Reserve is an unregulated bureaucracy. Finally, the kids found their voices. Ah! They screamed scrambling to escape from Paul's front porch. As the size of the debt increases and the interest rates increase, the amount we pay for interest on the national debt will increase by hundreds of billions of dollars. And who will get billed for that? You, the U.S. taxpayer, he called out as they ran down the block in terror. Don't say, I didn't warn you. Hey, wait, I forgot your candy, he added. <laughs> just to let you know he didn't actually do that Ron Paul's a really nice guy he would never do that <laughs> that was on the Babylon Bee <laughs> and I found it quite amusing uh, so I thought I'd share it with you <laughs> yeah <laughs> Ron Paul frightening children <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, this next one, and I, and I usually save the tech stories for the end, but 
we'll go ahead and cover it here because, uh, you know, I, I don't know who all out there is using iPhones, if any of you are actually using iPhones, and uh, you have an older model iPhone, uh, there's something you need to do or else. Now, I don't know if Apple is sending out push notifications to warn the users. I imagine they are. But uh, in, anyway, it's, it's, it was posted up here. And to me, it was like uh, a little disturbing that they they would actually do this. They would make this kind of change. Uh, unnecessary change, I would say. Uh, at least in this one area. Uh, so here you go. Uh, update your iPhone or your internet might go away. If you have an iPhone 5 or 4, that is. Uh, so apparently folks with older, older iPhones need to update their devices with the latest software before Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, Apple says the operating system update is required to maintain accurate GPS location and to continue using functions that rely on the correct date and time, including the App Store, iCloud, email, and web browsing. Bottom line, you might not be able to get on the Internet with the older software. So the update is critical for iPhone and iPad products from 2012 and earlier. Uh, that's the fourth generation, uh, iOS 10.3.4. And iOS Generation 4S, iPad Mini, uh, several other ones. You can look at the article here and, and see for yourself. Um, so this issue does not affect iPad Touch or any iPad models that have Wi-Fi only, according to Apple. It also does not affect iOS devices newer than those listed. So uh, it tells you how to find out which which version you have uh, there on your phone here. And you can check that out as well. And there is a link to uh, go and uh, do the update also, as well, too, including. So, uh, yeah, Cowboy Tech knows about the problem. He's a tech, you know, a, a computer tech guy. He knows about all this stuff. <laughs> He's well-versed in computer technology and keeping people up and running out there on the interwebs. So, there's that. Now, I don't know if you know any of these people or not. I, I I I have known some, and I think I still know some. But I won't mention any names of anybody that it may be included in this particular group. Uh, however, if you do know, or maybe you are one yourself, I don't know. Heavy alcohol drinkers who also smoke cannabis may slash their odds of getting killer liver disease, such as cirrhosis, by up to 55%. So if you know anybody out there that's a drinker, and only a drinker, just just somebody that, that drinks a ton of alcohol on a daily basis, or maybe a weekly basis, if they're maybe they're only weekend drinkers, I, I don't know, whatever. Um, and if they're not also pot smokers, convince them, Somehow, that they need to start smoking weed, because otherwise, there's a good chance they're going to die of some kind of liver disease. And with the weed in there, they can cut that chances of getting those liver diseases by up to 55%, at least according to this study here. Researchers analyzed data on almost 320,000 heavy drinkers in the study. Those who smoked cannabis had a 45% lower chance of fatty liver disease. It's unclear why marijuana, they call it the drug, pot, weed, dope, smoke, uh, it has this effect, but it is known to be anti-inflammatory. Binge drinkers may be, may be protected from deadly liver diseases if they also smoke cannabis. Heavy drinkers who smoked marijuana had a significantly lower odds of developing serious problems with their liver, including cirrhosis, uh, which is uh, cancer. Cancer. You don't want that in your liver. No. Uh, cannabis has been found to have anti-inflammatory properties, and its compounds are currently the subject of hundreds of studies, which, of course, not that long ago, they were 
uh, it was not the subject of any studies because the government jackboots would kill you for trying to even look at the positive benefits of marijuana. However, scientists said they are not currently sure why it's beneficial because, well, scientists are basically clueless people. They just try a bunch of different things till they find something that works. <laughs> Of the 320,000 people who they studied who had a history of alcohol abuse, 90% had never smoked cannabis. So there you have the number, man. 320K, 90% never smoked any weed. Around 8% smoked it now and again, and 2%... They, they use this phrase here, and, and I hate this phrase. We're dependent on it, meaning they felt withdrawal symptoms when not taking the drug. We're not smoking some weed. It's not a drug. And uh, it, it, there is no actual physical dependency uh, upon marijuana. It cannot happen upon weed. You can have a psychological dependence upon marijuana, but not a physical dependence. You will never like go into the DTs like you will with the alcohol. Uh, so just bear that in mind. Uh, both dependent and non-dependent smokers... Uh, had a 45% lower risk of getting alcohol steatosis, or fatty liver disease. They had a 55% lower chance of developing cirrhosis, scarring of the liver, which will kill you. Um, <laughs> their, their odds of the steohepatitis, which that doesn't sound good, a type of fatty liver disease, were also 43% lower. So pretty much any any anything that could possibly go wrong with your liver due to acts absolutely heavy heavy drinking, um, smoke some freaking weed, Ben. <laughs> they wrote the journal Liver International uh, in the j journal Liver International. While cannabis has demonstrated in anti-inflammatory properties, its combined use with alcohol and the development of liver disease remain unclear. Previous work by the same team on 5 million people who did not abuse alcohol found lower rates of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in cannabis smokers. So even of those you, those of you who aren't uh, big drinkers or uh, maybe just, you know, minor every now and then you have a beer or whatever, uh, drinkers, uh, the, the pot still helps. The pot still helps with the liver. So uh, smoke pot, smoke pot, everybody smoke pot. All right. <laughs> The team noted receptors in the body, which responded to the compounds in the cannabis, have the ability to suppress the collection of fat on the liver, therefore protecting it from disease. Previous research has already found cannabinoid receptors in the liver are potential targets for the treatment of liver disease. So it's not clear in either of the studies which part of the cannabis plant may be protective. So just smoke it and you'll be good. You'll be good to go. They don't know what they're doing. They know it works. They have no idea why. But if you smoke it, you're good to go. So there you go. Um, <laughs> they, they also say here, we could also not ascertain the dosage or modes of use. So I'm going to say, get high every day. How about that? Um, <laughs> THC is the uh, psychoactive compound, for anybody that doesn't already realize that. That creates a high. But there are hundreds of more compounds in the cannabis plants. Uh, CBD, cannabinoidable, <laughs> I could never say that word, is thought to help reduce anxiety and inflammation. Uh, blah, 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 and has taken the health market by storm. Yep, so anyway, smoke pot, man, I'm telling you. Um, and, and there's all kinds of other information here uh, about about smoking the weed, the good weed. The good weed! Yes, indeed, smoke the good weed. And you will be better off for it. You'll be healthier for it. And you will be happier. Whether you're healthier or not, you'll be happier. Because, you know, you're smoking the weed. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> oh. 
not necessarily a Halloween story, <laughs> and maybe not even the truth. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Sometimes I come across these stories there, and, uh, oh, I forgot to put that one in. All right, let me go back over there and put that thing in there. I forgot to put that 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 uh, uh, that link in my list of links that I need for the post show blog. So uh, let me just grab that here and put that in there over there uh, because yeah, you uh, I'm, I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need that before I get to the next one. All right, okay. All right, go away, go away, go away. Okay. As I said, not necessarily a Halloween story. Eh, I'm maybe not even true. But here it is. <laughs> South Carolina man cites fear of zombies as a stabbing motive. Fear of zombies as a stabbing motive. <laughs> Manetta, South Carolina. A South Carolina man was arrested for stabbing a woman. He says, uh, he, a woman, uh, for stabbing a woman, says she tried to feed him to zombies. Very oddly phrased sentence there. I, I, I'm not even sure what they're, I mean, I get the point, but uh, who wrote this? Did you guys actually go to, like, journalism school? Anyway, <laughs> William Berry, 29, was arrested on charges of attempted murder and possession of a weapon during a violent crime, according to jail records. Now, I think possession of a weapon during a violent crime is probably kind of a prerequisite. I, I, I don't know, maybe not. I mean, I guess you could beat people with your hands or something, but uh, would your hands not then be the weapon? And, and you're in possession of your hands. Anyway, police responded to the reported stabbing at approximately 9.15 a.m. on Saturday on Cato Road in Mineta. An incident report states, The victim told deputies Barry stabbed her multiple times in the back and ran away. Deputies say they located Barry walking along the highway after learning of a man matching his description in the area and arrested him. The report states Barry told uh, the deputy he poked someone because she was trying to feed him to zombies and being mean to him. <laughs> no, the victim was taken to the hospital for treatment uh, of five to six stab wounds in her back. No bail has been set for Barry, who remained in jail on Monday at Aiken County. Uh, so... If you try to feed somebody to zombies, uh, you might get stabbed. You And being mean. And being mean. <laughs> she was a meanie. A big meanie. <laughs> Which, uh, I, I don't know if you stab them for being a big meanie. But when they try to feed you to zombies, I mean, you know. <laughs> That's one toke over the line, buddy. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> this is the world. This is the world we live in. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. I am going to... Uh, I'm going to uh, do some more music. And then we'll get back to some more of these weird, weird-ass stories. True, but weird-ass stories. Ugh. <sighs> I have several anti-zombie weapons at hand as well. I got a 12 gauge sitting right here. I got a couple uh, big ass knives. I got a machete. Uh, <laughs> I got I got I got some tools ready for the zombie apocalypse. Apocalypse. Alpaca lips. All right. <laughs> oh man, where where am I? Here I am. Here I am. Okay, this is um, the Stray Cat Strut. Oops. <laughs> I missed my ending there. Uh, <laughs> I was busy doing some stuff. Um, <laughs> that's a band there called Palace of the King uh, doing a song called Move uh, Through the Fire. Uh, some pretty good stuff there. I, I like that. Uh, before that was a cowboy tech request there, Pink Floyd, Monty, uh, with uh, Roger Waters and uh, Gilmore and 
uh, the others there. And we kicked it off with uh, the Stray Cat Strut uh, uh, by Miss uh, Just Edie here. Uh, Just Edie here in, in the uh, chat room. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a little, I had a little problem here. Uh, I, uh, when I, when I opened my, uh, wire, cause, uh, it said it was an update, I said, oh, okay, well, just, uh, give me that little update, and apparently, uh, it, uh, speaking of borked, uh, yeah, it borked my, uh, uh, my wire, so I'm gonna try and, uh, just run this off the, uh, uh, the interwebs here, and, and do it that way, cause, uh, well, um, I, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know what happened, uh, there on that, but, I'm um, trying to go to the, uh, the website, uh, connection setup here and, uh, see if I can do it that way. Um, anyway, great song, Just Edie. I uh, appreciate that very much. And, uh, yeah, you're a talented woman. Um, so, um, <laughs> I can't figure out what I did though on the wire here on my, uh, on my deal. So something something broke. I, I don't know what it is uh, uh, with, with that stupid update. I should never try and do updates in the middle of a show, but I did, and um, and now it's broke. So uh, you know what I'm gonna do. You know what I'm gonna. You know, I'm gonna. I think. I think. I think. I think. I know what I'm gonna do here uh, is uh, just go ahead and uninstall that shit and uh, see if that. Uh, see if I can't just reinstall it from there. You know. I... <laughs> Oh, no, I told it to uninstall, and I tried to open. Okay, there it goes, and it is gone away. So there's a bonus on that. That's one thing, because uh, their website thing is not loading for whatever reason. So uh, let me try and reset this up now and uh, see if that fixed it when I had to do that. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deal, man. It's a deal. And I see nothing. It's just a white screen. Well, hell, man, I broke the wire in the in their wire website. It is not loading for me. Um, so I wanted to have uh, Vinny wanted to call in, and and um, I I don't know what happened. I I, do, I I just I just I just don't know. Something something went awry, and uh, so. <laughs> oh man <laughs> stop quit moving around on me over here I know this is this is exciting radio still trying to do tech support on my own computer while, while I'm doing the show uh, cannot open this item uh, no, no I do not no no I don't want to what did I do wrong what did I do wrong Oh no, that should be it. Um, what? What happened? Wire. Let's see what happens. Uh, no, no. Oh well, maybe I do. I don't know. Let me uh, let me just check one other thing here, because uh, uh, some sometimes certain things happen that I do to myself. <laughs> oh man alright let's try it here see if that works uh, no it's still not working alright I, 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 I don't know anyway if you see that little update thing on your machine then uh, <sighs> don't do it because apparently it is breaking something at least it did on my machine um, wow, okay, okay, I, I, I don't, I don't get what I did, I don't get what I did, <laughs> son of a bitch, sorry Vinny, uh, I can't let you call in because uh, my wire's broken, um, yeah, yeah, should have waited, but I have this thing, you know, I have this thing when when I see an update. <laughs> it's a some some kind of little quirk I have about uh, needing needing to run updates that that it's telling me are there. And uh I wish it didn't, but it did. 
And, uh, yeah, well, oh, well, uh, so, um, yeah, terrible, 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 <laughs> all right, <laughs> okay, whatever, man, I, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but, um, but I'm dead in the water on the wire, so, um, wow, okay, uh, yeah, go ahead and get rid of it, I, 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 Huh. All right, we'll put that back in there. <laughs> well, yeah, and that, like none of, none of the nothing is working. Start, yeah, 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 no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. All right. Ah, oh, spicy. I like the spicy. Spicy good. Oh, wait. 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 Is it going to load? It looks like it's going to load. Wait. Hey, it loaded. Hooray. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I, on, the, on the wire menu there, I went to the uh, thing there. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's see. If, oh, God. Let's see if I can talk to Vinny now. <laughs> Here he comes, I think. Oh, I better turn off this player. Yeah, you better turn off the player. So I, you know, oh, I, I don't know what happened. It, it what? Oh, so I don't know. I don't know what happened. It wasn't loading, and then on, on the help, because like the part of the thing loaded, but it was like a blank screen. And then on the help menu, I went to the uh, went to click the support website link there, and then the rest of the thing loaded up. So. Weird. I was about to go find a, a Doors song. <laughs> Come on, baby, bump my wire. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> the the Ed Sullivan, thank you, thank you. Oh my God, Ed Sullivan show. We've got a really, really, really big show tonight. Really big show. Hey, shoes. I'm so excited. Just Edie came over. Here. I am That's too. Edie Murphy, <laughs> that is so awesome. Yes, we we love your music. She is so fun. And, 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 not, let, and let, let me just say this. Not only do we love her music, is she not talented? She is a babolicious. Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder uh, with how close you get to Tennessee. She's headed to Tennessee one time or another. And already been there, I think. <laughs> She's out well, there around Hollywood now, but going back to where the real, real music's at. Uh, I'm, I'm embarrassing her there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, oh yeah, well, I don't know anything about Tennessee. I've never been there myself personally, but uh, Edie I, has a lot, a lot of great songs over here on her channel. Yeah, uh, no, I I've checked some of them out. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to explore over here. I mean, lots and lots of different genres. That's and, cool, man. Uh, yeah, with a lot of uh, bluegrass uh, bass right there, and the mandolin and fiddle, yeah. and guitar. Multi talented, very much so. If we're if we're voting on hair color, I go with black. What? Oh, I was just looking at uh, uh, some of her other videos, and she has black hair and then lighter hair here. I oh, think okay. that's what she wears today. But I know that's never a good idea to say. Oh yeah, I like to hear you the other way. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I do. I, I'm a fan of the dark hair myself. Yes. Yeah. Hey, what about hot peppers? I've got uh, I've got about what five or six of these Trinidad scorpion chilies left, and uh, they're turning red. So I'm about out of any green. The greens are hot enough, man. But when they go red, they get real, real hot. This one guy, <laughs> he he bit into one, <laughs> and it was about what two, three seconds, and he was rolling on the ground, scalding. I mean to tell you, eyes of water and begging for something to drink is over because one guy's house didn't have no water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought he was going to start eating dirt for a minute. Yeah, really, really though, what you want, if you, if you, if you bite into a really hot pepper and your mouth's on fire, uh, bread and milk will, uh, 
uh, help you out there. But uh, water is is really not uh, doesn't no. do, doesn't do much but it, good. <laughs> it's good for your mind. You think you kill yourself off anyways. You know, water fire water. I, I he's like I said. I expect he might have took a handful of dirt or something. That probably took burn out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're hot. They're hot. I can't eat them plain. Got to eat them with something else. I made a really good. Uh, I call it pico de gallo. The uh, the bite of the rooster. Come back, barman. Barman left. So yeah, a couple of years away then for uh, Tennessee. Uh, my family come from Tennessee and went there in uh, 1700s over in way far east Tennessee, in Kingsport. I went back and visited. I was a year and a half uh, on travels here with uh, reporting at Real Liberty Media. Right. Uh, you know, it circled the whole country. Went down from here in Arkansas to Texas to Tennessee and all the way out and spent time in Spokane. And, uh, a short visit to Hal Anthony right here at Real Liberty Media at noon o'clock on the left coast out there in California time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, behind the woodshed. And I got to uh, meet Hal and... Uh, Big, uh, big influence I think in the way I uh, approach life, and if, especially the traversing through this uh, this Bundy trial out there, and being a witness for the uh, for the Bundys, and having been at the standoff in 2014. Right. I, and then, uh, well, I went to Denver and to a trial up there, and uh, different events and around in California, out to Lone Park, where uh, uh, the fellow rode his horse in and turned himself into prison from the uh, Oregon standoff to now your refuge up there. Yeah. And, um, that's just kind of what I was doing for a while and, and really enjoyed it. And I got to stop off in my home state of Tennessee there and spend some time and uh, go back and clean up some graveyards of my ancestors out there that uh, born way back when. Mm-hmm. A lot of fun. Yeah, I've been a reporter here now uh, doing radio writing and taking them because my voice is not caught back up after I got sick for a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, but I can do some, some talking with uh, we flash somebody uh, on Tuesdays. Be doing that for a while till I get back in the swing of the voice here. But I really, I just want to come on and say uh, we're so glad that you come to visit uh, Miss Edie. Sure enough, and love your music, and it's a real great honor you come over here and say howdy. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's very nice to have Brighton back with us as well. Yeah, I, I heard you talk about Brighton, and I guess I know who that is. Yeah, because, because she was before your time. She was before you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, she was part of the old crowd with uh, uh, with uh, Jason. Was it Jason? I think so. Uh, her husband. They, they live out in Sedona. Uh, and uh, back when A Girl and Meme Filter, do you know those names? Mm-mm. No, okay. I've been here what about four years or something. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you you weren't around during the Bold Voices era. Mm-mm. Yeah, I reckon not. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, she was there. hadn't been around for a long time, and then she popped back in there, and uh, last week during during the uh, the Halloween show. And, oh, cool. Uh, so yeah, it was great to great to to see her back there. Wait a minute. Let me see here. What is this? Who it is? Brighton. Yeah, 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 yeah. I seen her, uh, so I just followed her on Twitter. Okay. It's Brighton four hundred three. Yeah, because they they like the uh, tweet out there that you uh, get the notifications of the show. So I just thought oh, in turn okay. I would follow her. I went to Real Liberty Media YouTube channel and subscribed her YouTube channel as well for us. Yeah, and I'll grab a I'll grab that link and bring it over here. Yeah, she used to do shows with. Uh... With her hubby there, and, and uh, yeah, it's great. So, anyway, it's nice to have her back around. Um, oh, that's cool. After all, There's time. a long link for new subscribers right there to her channel. Oh, she has a YouTube channel? Uh-huh. Yeah, I just put it into the chat. Okay. I subscribed from, uh, from Real Liberty Media to her, and then I'll go back to my other channel. Subscribe, give her some hits over there, too. Oh, okay. Great. All right. Well, I'll subscribe to her. Where's the, where's oh, she followed me back on Twitter. Thank you, Kimberly. Yep. You, unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unicorn. Uh, okay, okay. Cool. That's great. Yeah. Then, uh, right on. Yeah. Well, I, hey, I'll give you the mic back, and uh, I'll see you guys. Uh, I, 
I got a lot of stuff to do tomorrow, so I won't be on the flash tomorrow. I don't know if Grammy's going to be or not, but uh, I'll be back around for uh, for Tuesday at uh, one o'clock Eastern time. Tuesday. If we can get his Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. 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 <laughs> Tuesday. Say it. Tuesday. Day. Day. It's a day. <laughs> yes, a day. Indeed, it is a day. <laughs> All right. All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Graham. Appreciate everything you do, man. All right. We'll talk to you later, man. Later, bro. Matt. All right. Mr. Vincent Easley there uh, with us on, on the deal. So, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have to get after him for, for that for that Arky speech Tuesday. Uh, and I'm not even sure that's really Arky, but, you know, uh, well, well, whatever, whatever it may be. All right, let's see what we got to cover here. Uh, <laughs> oh, just stupid shit, man. Just stupid, total, total stupid stuff going on in, in what is considered real news. Because, come on. Are you serious? <laughs> but apparently they are. Uh, so anyway, we're going to start with this one right here over on blacklistednews.com. Report, Baghdadi's body chucked out of an airplane like a bag of garbage into the ocean. <laughs> yeah, according to this here, Islamic State leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi allegedly had his body thrown into the sea from a U.S. military aircraft after he was afforded his religious rights according to Islamic custom, which, however, is a massive lie and has nothing to do with Islamic custom. It's basically an insult to Islamic custom, but that's not what they're telling you here. Uh, according to this here, uh, the United States has given the remains of the Islamic State leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi a burial at sea and afforded him religious rights according to Islamic custom after he was killed in a U.S. commando raid, if that even happened, in Syria on Saturday. Baghdadi here, an Iraqi jihadist who rose from obscurity, meaning he's probably a CIA asset, to declare himself caliph of all Muslims as the leader of Islamic State, uh, died by donating a suicide, died by detonating, not donating, <laughs> yeah, here, have this. I'm donating this suicide vest to you. By detonating a suicide vest after fleeing into a dead-end tunnel. Sure he did, as elite U.S. Special Forces closed in at the weekend, according to the U.S. government. The U.S. officials who spoke on condition of anonymity... Oh, huh. Interesting. Why? I wonder why. Did not disclose where the ritual was performed. I think chucking somebody out of an airplane is not really a ritual. <laughs> Two officials said they believed his remains were del delivered to the sea from an aircraft. Baghdadi's remains were transported to a secure facility to confirm his identity with some kind of magic DNA. Somebody said that he'd, he'd been in custody before they let him go. But I've read various reports saying, yeah, maybe not so much. So they had some magic DNA they compared his against, apparently. Anyway, as the guy here, and this, his name is Chris Menahan, the author here, uh, has stated here, as he highlighted in 2011, after the Obama administration supposedly had Osama thrown into the ocean according with uh, in accordance with Islam Islamic scholars told the Associated Press such burials at sea run completely contrary to the standard Muslim practice of placing the body in a grave with the head pointed towards the holy city of Mecca he the guy the author that wrote this doesn't actually care how either was allegedly buried odds are uh, Bin Laden had been dead for many years prior to the uh, raid, capture, tossing into the sea thing. 
According to these anonymous anonymous officials, I care more that the public is not being given a shred of evidence to back up the government's official stories. And they are stories. That's all they are is stories. And the media, shh, they're, they're just part of the same team. They don't, they don't question it. They just report it exactly as they're told to do. Now, there's a, a girl, Syrian girl, that you can find over there on Twitter. And she, she puts out some really good stuff. I, I like Syrian girl. Anyway, uh, the, the question everyone wants to ask the Delta Force involved in Baghdadi's death going to mysteriously die in a helicopter. Or, oh, the, the, if you don't remember, all the people that supposedly were in the Osama bin Laden raid, all of the SEAL Team 6, I guess, all died mysteriously after the raid. Uh, so she's wondering if the ones involved in Baghdadi's death are going to do the same, uh, meet the same fate. Which I'm guessing, yeah, they probably will, uh, because whether or not they, you think you can trust them, you never really can trust them to say, yeah, we never got that guy. That, that never happened. No, none of this is true. <laughs> Because they may be uh, on board right now, but a year or two, three, four down the line, they may change their mind and say that was all nonsense. There was, there was no freaking, there was no freaking raid. We didn't get no guy and throw him into the ocean. Well, what kind of, what kind of <laughs> crap is this? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Okay, let's say you go to the store, and you purchase for your son, grandson, maybe for yourself, a BB gun. Not Partisan Girl. Is that Partisan Girl? Is that her? Is that her? Partisan Girl? Syrian Girl? Sir, Syrian Girl is Partisan Girl? Oh, that is her. Okay. I, 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 all right. Cool. Yeah, so check her out. She's good. Uh, anyway, um... Thanks, Cal, uh, leading for that link. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's say you go to the store and you purchase yourself a BB gun. You know, maybe one of those pump action things, you pop, 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 with, with the little BB gun. And you take it home and the BB gun doesn't work. And you go, what the hell? I just paid a good, whatever they are, 40, 60, 80 bucks for those things. Ah, and this it doesn't work. So you go back to the store. And out of abundance, an abundance of caution, you decide, I'm not going to just go ahead and, and bring the BB gun back into the store with me. I'm going to go inside and tell the clerk, hey, I bought this BB gun and it ain't working. I have it out here in my car. Do you want to come out and take a look at it? And the guy at the store says, no, you go out there and bring it in. So you go out to the car and you bring the BB gun into the store. Somebody sees you carrying a BB gun and freaks out <laughs> and calls the police to come in and, and go after you. Now, luckily, this particular guy didn't die, didn't get shot by the cops, but he did get arrested. And uh, whoever called the cops said uh, this guy at the Cincinnati Dayton Road Walmart that he was there with a gun threatening to shoot people, calling the 911 number. Uh, so that's uh, <laughs> the Walmart employee told the dispatch officers the gun looked like a rifle. Well, of course it did. It was a BB gun rifle. Uh, anyway, so according to documents, the rifle was a BB gun, which... Why was there court documents after the cops got there and saw it was a BB gun and talked to the guy and he said he was bringing it back? But they went ahead and arrested him anyway and uh, charged him with oh, all kinds of various things that are that are not good. Um, <laughs> apparently, the uh, clerk that he tried to return it to was was giving him a lot of problems, giving him a headache, uh, and 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 uh, and he kind of made some comment to the to the, the Walmart employee, like, what are you, an idiot? Or not exactly that, but basically that. Um, 
so he was arrested and charged with inducing panic, menacing, aggravated menacing. He pleaded not guilty, of course, uh, because he was, well, not guilty. Um, so what do you do? Uh, I mean, what do you what are you supposed to do? People are going to freak out. They see you with a freaking gun. <laughs> they don't stop to say, hey, this is a BB gun. Oh, the, the store clerk wouldn't come out and take a look and see what the hell's going on. Just such a bunch of nonsense that people have to go through because people are such weirdos and freak out over shit like this, man. It's, it's just, it's just, uh, what man who killed family? No, it's not the right one. Oh, I scrolled down too far and it changed, it changed stories on me. <laughs> Oh God! That's one of these what one of those sites where you scroll down and it changes the story headline. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I tell you. All right. Anyway, so there's that wonderful. This is real stuff happening out there in the real world. Oh, okay. Let me let me tell you, talk talk to you about this. Any of you out there that are YouTube users. Do you use the YouTubes? Do you like the YouTubes? Well, this week, I, I don't know, maybe they started doing it last week. I don't know. They changed the home page, the front page, uh, where, where all the videos are listed. And instead of being like three, four across, depending on your setup, um, they were, there was one right after another where you had to like, it was annoying. You had to scroll all the way down looking for different stuff uh, and, and putting these in these big things. Uh, well, anyway, I didn't like it. And uh, so I decided, what the hell, there's got to be a way to fix this. And lo and behold, there is. <laughs> In the form of a plug-in. Uh, what, what the hell did I do there? Oh, that's right. That's right. This doesn't let me do this. Um, for some reason, the, uh, the, the Firefox uh, add-on store, store site... Uh, doesn't let you, uh, copy and paste the, uh, thing there. Um, but anyway, so if you want to restore it to the old look for the YouTube, what they call YouTube Classic, uh, there, there's an add-on there for, uh, for Firefox. And if you use Chrome, uh, let me see if this works here. Um, uh, over here for this. Yeah. Okay. If you, if you, if you use Chrome, there is also a, uh, plug-in for that. So I would suggest, uh, if you like, uh, the, the way, instead of scrolling through all their crap so they can do, put more ads in the middle, um, use, use one of these two plugins, uh, depending on, on your browser preference. And when I say Firefox or Chrome, I also mean any Mozilla or Chrome, uh, branches. Uh, which, like Brave, would be a Chrome branch, or uh, Waterfox would be a, a Mozilla branch. So, um, yeah, that was that. I'm there. I'm that. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and play some more music here. <laughs> and then uh, we'll come back and talk about some more goofy stuff going on out here in the world. Because it is a goofy ass world. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, here we are. Okay. This first track here is a Mister uh, Trust No One, A.K.A. Rome's uh, request. This is Queens, right? <laughs> oh yeah, nice stuff there. Uh, I know there's not a lot of Power Wolf fans here in the uh, listening in, but uh, let me tell you, I, I love Power Wolf. Uh, anyway, that video just was premiered today, earlier today, this morning, uh, and that's called Kiss of the Cobra King, in case you didn't get that from the uh, lyrics there. <laughs> so, hooray, Power Wolf, new stuff coming out from Power Wolf, and uh, yeah, I, I love them. All right, before that was Ghoul Town with Killer in Texas. And we kicked it off with that Rome's request there. Uh, Queensryche doing propaganda fashion. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All good stuff. Um, well, it, it's good stuff to me, you know. I 
don't know about you and what you all like, but uh, since I'm the one doing the show here, <laughs> I play what I like. Oh, man. <laughs> Kiss of the Cobra King. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Uh, I, I, I hope they, they they put more 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 new videos out soon because uh, I said I, I just I just dig that band. Uh, they they've got this sound. They got a sound like nobody else. Uh, Power Wolf. Yep, 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 yep. Really, really cool stuff. Um, for those of you, I mean, it's uh, I, I don't even know what you would call it. It's it's kind of a Eastern European uh, heraldic metal. So, uh, yeah. What are you laughing at, Brighton? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Last night. What? Somebody actually... Well, they probably didn't actually do this, but they, but they went on... Onto the onto the uh, tweeter and bragged that they were going to do it. <sighs> I don't know what kind of people these are. There's something wrong with them. There's something definitely wrong mentally with them. Antifa supporter brags about giving kids dressed as Trump fentanyl laced candy. Uh huh. Yeah, really. He says, if I see, this is his, his words, if I see any children dressed up in some MAGA type of costume, like this little worm, I'm going to be giving them my special fentanyl laced candy. Antifa action. Tweeted, I don't know, D. Jenko Chained, I don't know what the hell his name is, alongside a poster of a young boy dressed as the president with death crosses over his eyes. Adding fentanyl pills to my Halloween candy for the MAGA children to eat, the individual subsequently tweeted with an image of pills about to be dropped into a bag of chocolate bars. I don't even know if fentanyl comes in pills, but maybe it does, I don't know. The original tweet received over 1,200 likes People are liking the fact that this guy is going to poison children. Of course he's not. I'm sure he doesn't have fentanyl, whoever the frick he is. But apparently attempting to poison children to own the Trump supporters is uh, somehow stunning and brave. Ugh. I don't make this stuff up. I, I, I don't make this stuff up at all. <laughs> oh my laugh oh okay well Brighton <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it so I, there's a picture of some pills there I don't know what they are they're big ass pills could be anything but uh, I'm pretty sure it's not fentanyl pills I don't think you just get that. I don't think anybody's handing out fentanyl pills <laughs> so. Uh, so he was just being a wise or a loudmouth, obnoxious piece of crap is what he was doing there on that. Now, you all know, you all know about the uh, fires going on out there in California. And you know that homeowners out there, most homeowners, anyway, and probably business owners as well, have a uh, wild have um, fire insurance for their homes. Because, you know, if you're going to live in a place where there's a lot of wildfires, you tend to have fire insurance. Even if you live in a place where there's not a lot of wildfires, you tend to have fire insurance. It's just the way it goes. Or it's included as part of your homeowner's insurance. But now, if you live out there in California... There's a good chance that your insurer, whoever they may be, will no longer be providing for you fire insurance. It says here that insurers drop fire coverage for 350,000 
California residents. Yep, insurance has become a serious problem in California as wildfires, past and present, wreak havoc on the state. After last year's devastating wildfires, insurance companies are balking at fire coverage coverage policy renewal renewals for more than 350 350,000 residents in high risk areas. We are seeing an increased trend across California where people at risk of wildfires are being non-renewed by their insurer according to the state insurance commissioner Ricardo Lara. Uh the the California Department of Insurance has seen cases where homeowners were paying an annual premium of 800 to 1000 dollars but upon renewal saw increases to as high as 2500 to 30 or to 5000 dollars a staggering rise of more than 300% in most cases uh the department added that some of these homeowners have conduct, conducted extensive and costly defensible space and other mitigation but these actions did not lower premiums. Insurers, meanwhile, are struggling to find a financially viable coverage model as blazes become increasingly common and unpredictable. Experts consulted by the strike force believe climate change. <laughs> they believe climate change. Uh, development patterns, <laughs> deferred utility equipment maintenance, well, there's the big one, uh, and other factors suggest much heightened risk going forward. Uh, yeah, not to mention the fact that they don't let them clear the wood out uh, in the, the dead wood, in the old trees, the old growth, uh, as they're supposed to be able to do. Um, so predicting how much risk and how and how consistently is more difficult, and there's also uncertainty about the level of success we can expect it reducing the frequency and severity of wildfires. Last year's Camp Fire, the deadliest and most destructive in California history, engulfed more than 18,000 structures and killed more than 80 people before it was contained and caused more than $12 billion in insured losses. The California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection lists 12 active incidents at the time of publication, live, going on presently. So here's the deal. You buy insurance. You pay insurance. And it's all good and fine unless you ever make a claim on that insurance. Or if they decide the risk is too high, no more insurance for you. <sighs> This is insurance. It's such a such a freaking scam, man. What 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 kind of deal, man? I I just incredible, crazy stuff uh, there on that. And, and I apologize, by the way, for posting a Fox Business link, but that's where the article was. <laughs> I don't like posting any Fox links of any kind, but. You know, <laughs> oh God! <sighs> All right, this may, may this may interest some of you. Uh, I wish it interested me, but it doesn't because of where I live, and and because the service is not provided here. I do buy it. I, I do buy homeowners and auto insurance. Yes, I do. I also pay, pay property taxes, which, by the way, I just got my new property tax bill for this year. Uh, well, for next year, really, but it comes in in November. So it, it gets here right on November 1st, too, by the way. Uh, this is the first year since I've lived here, the 15 years that I've lived here, that the, 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 uh, the, uh, Property tax has actually gone down, and it went down a pretty good amount, about 150 bucks. So I, I say that's a good amount, uh, depending on how much you're paying. 150 bucks may not be a lot, but out here in New Mexico, where I live, the property tax was never that much. 
compared to other states. It's always a lot. I should never have to be paying twelve hundred bucks a fucking year. Uh but this year it's it's only uh eight fifty or something or nine fifty. Nine fifty. So um it was a good chunk cut down, which I'm glad to see, which takes me back a few years of, of uh, property tax increases. Uh, but whatever, I, I pay that, and that's so they don't steal my house from me. It's like having a gun pointed at your head saying, either you pay us or we'll steal your house <laughs> at gunpoint. So anyway, here it is. here's the story. Not uh, relevant for my area because the service is not here. Amazon offering free grocery delivery for Prime members. And these would be for those that are in urban areas, not in rural areas. Probably suburban areas. Uh, night, Vinny. Um, sleep well. So Amazon is eliminating its fee for grocery delivery in the United States as competition heats up in the rapidly expanding food delivery business. Before today, Amazon charged Prime members $14.99 a month uh, for its Amazon Fresh online grocery delivery service. Two-hour whole food deliveries were free for many Prime customers through Amazon's Prime Now delivery app. Starting Tuesday, next Tuesday, grocery delivery for Amazon Fresh is free for Prime members who previously used the grocery delivery service. I think that's a little confusing in their wording because I'm pretty sure it's free for all Prime members that are in the service area. Amazon is rolling out the new free service in phases. Prime members who haven't yet ordered groceries in request, can request an invitation. Amazon didn't say it when it will start taking on new grocery delivery customers. Um... See, the minimum, the delivery minimum for Amazon Fresh Service is 50 bucks in New York City, 35 bucks in a majority of the other 2,000 regions the service is available in. Again, not available in Moriarty. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, slight changes are also coming to the whole food deliveries. Uh, whatever, read the article to get all the details on that if you're interested in uh, this information because... Um, I, I like uh, getting food delivered, uh, groceries delivered. I use a couple other things. They're not fresh foods that get delivered to me, but uh, stuff like boxed and uh, uh, there, there's a couple others that I use that uh, do deliver um, certain types of groceries to me. Uh, so, uh, but none, none of the fresh stuff comes my way. So, but if you like that uh, and you're in a uh, urban or suburban area. You're probably okay to get that kind of delivery going to you. Um, it's a nice thing, you know. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know how I would feel having somebody else pick out my, my produce and meat products. Um, but, uh, eh, I'd give it a whirl and see how it worked out. <laughs> what time is it? All right. <laughs> oh, man. All right, some of these I got to save for another day. Oh, speaking of groceries, <laughs> this is a bad idea, and not just for groceries, but for anything else, because I don't want my face to be used. I, I don't want any kind of biometric used, actually, uh, to pay for stuff. But according to this article on thestar.com, you could soon use your face to pay for groceries. But privacy experts are urging caution. Uh, yeah, I would say a great deal of caution is required in this. Instead of pulling out a credit card or counting out cash to pay for his bottle of water, all Chris Benton had to do was to peer into a screen an image of his face was captured by cameras mounted on top of the screen to verify his identity in the machine known as Snap Pay Grocers during a product demonstration at the Retail West Conference in Vancouver, attended by business professionals looking to discuss consumer trends. 
What now? As you're falling asleep one night, the voice calls out from the living room. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, any, anyway, um, <laughs> whatever that, uh, yeah. I say, in, in a real life retail scenario, a client using their face to pay for products would see an automatic charge to their credit uh, or debit card amount. Snap Pay Grocers has not arrived in the Canadian stores yet, but Renton, who is the chief gross officer at Snap Pay in the, uh, the Toronto based company that owns Snap Pay Grocers, thinks the convenience of technology will have mass appeal and eventually attract retailers. <laughs> God. Uh, no, no, bad idea. Uh, it asks you here at the bottom of this article, too, by the way. Uh, do, do, do you think this is a good idea? Does this appeal to you? Um, and, and I am going to say no. And about a uh, little over, a little under half, half of the people say no, um, which is way not enough uh, people to say no. So, um, yeah, there's that. Good night, Mike. By the way, I, I missed you leaving, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is this is what's going on out there in the world. Okay, let's do this. Going to work on a Friday night. Dang, Prince, you're a hard-working man. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, on... Uh, Health Nut News, healthnutnews.com. I like mushrooms as much as the next person, and I'm not talking about the magic variety, the psilocybin variety. I'm talking about regular edible mushrooms. I like them. They're they're, they're fine. But they're not they're not beef. They're not chicken. But apparently, according to this article, cow and chicken farmers switch to growing mushrooms. Yes, farmers Jennifer and Rodney Barrett raised chickens and cows on their Arkansas farm for 18 years before a realization struck them. Faced with conflicting feelings over the ethics of their business, the couple left the family business behind to start their careers as vegan mushroom farmers. Jennifer told the couple's story in a post on the Free From Harm, a platform that advocates for the fair treatment of all animals. They married in 1991 and took over Jennifer's family farm in 1999. In 2011, Rodney was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, while Jennifer battled with arthritis, depression, and hypertension. In 2016, the couple adopted a three-week vegan diet program, Jennifer said. I started working out and learning more about nutrition. I started to dig and question everything as my body responded to responded to treating it better. Huh, imagine that. Your body responded to treating it better. <laughs> uh, Woodman hates mushrooms. It took you a minute to get used to the auto checkout kiosks. Yeah, I don't use those either. <laughs> I'm gonna have somebody ring me up. I'm not. I'm not. I, they're not paying me to damn be a cashier. Anyway, uh, an elimination diet put Rodney's UC into remission five years earlier, and the three-week program led to new health benefits. This time around, Jennifer said the diet sparked a change in the couple's conscious, adding, "What the program went." When that program was complete, I felt like a whole new person. My mind was sharp and clear. So, uh, anyway, it goes on and talks about what they were doing wrong and how they have now believe that uh, raising uh, animals for food is a bad idea, and you probably don't want to do that. I like tomatoes and, uh, and shrooms and mushrooms and... Uh, um, some very not not I don't I don't like all vegetable type stuff, but uh, I, I do like a lot of them. Um, I, I I don't like Brussels sprouts. I I don't know uh, how that matters, but 
<laughs> I'm not a fan of the Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Broccoli's all right. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Okay, let's play some more music, and we'll come back. And, uh, yeah, we're definitely worthy headlines, but it's not just headlines. It's, it's, it's um, I'm on here talking about it. So that's why you see headlines, because you're missing out on the fact that I'm here. Um, <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, back to the music here. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, do the boogie, y'all. And this one's called Bad Boy Boogie. Damn! <laughs> oh man, that is that's some awesome stuff right there. Joe Bonham also playing along with Warren Haynes at the Guitar Center's King of the Blues back in 2011. Man, those two just just tear it up, tear it up. Uh, doing uh, feel like breaking up somebody's home there, or uh, just breaking up somebody's home. Uh, man, it's just uh, wow. Anyway, before that, we had uh, Sisters Sin with the sound of uh, the underground. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still... Uh, I can't believe those guys broke up. They were, they were such a good band, uh, Sister Sin. Uh, Liv, Liv Sin, she's still doing some stuff on her own, but, uh, man, nothing, nothing like the, that whole band, Sister Sin. They, they were just amazing. Uh, anyway, we kicked it off there with the ACDC, the ACDC. Uh, yeah, uh, bad boy boogie, Bon Scott on vocals. That's an oldie, an oldie. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but man, I tell you, Joe Bonamassa is definitely the. Uh, I, I, if you if you want to look at that as a guitar battle between Haynes and Bonamassa, uh, Bonamassa is obviously the uh, superior. Player, but man, to go, both of them together, I, I don't think they uh, consider that a battle. I think they, they just collaboration. You know, it's uh, amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, that's uh, yeah, that's that's what I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I tell you, uh, great, 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 great stuff. So, boy, uh hope you all got some good plans or something like that for the weekend, you know. I, I, I don't know. Uh, something something good going on for you all out there at your homes or wherever. Um, yeah. Yeah, something good, something fun. All right, let's see what we got here. We got, we got, we got, we got, we got, we got three, we got eight. Uh, what, 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 what? Yeah, 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 eight, uh, six, fourteen, um, three is seventeen. Okay, good. Improvements for everyone. Uh, okay. <laughs> seventeen. So I don't have too many minutes. Um, all right. Let's see here. Oh yeah, I want to talk about this story, man. I, I, I saw a movie that was something like this, but uh, how, do, how do I pause this? There's some stupid video playing there, and I, I don't want to see it. Okay, on the Daily Dot here, uh, posted up this article on um, October 30. So, uh, what the hell? Wow. Here it is. Torture porn. Haunted house accused of sexually assaulting attendees. And there's a petition, apparently, to shut down the McCabe Manor uh, that has racked up tens of thousands of signatures online. So the haunted house requires participants to create a safe word and sign a 40-page waiver before they enter... And now there's this petition to try and shut it down. 
a change.org petition, which has garnered more than 65,000 signatures uh, that calls McCamey Manor a torture chamber in disguise. So they do screenings to find out the weakest, most easily manipulated people to do the haunt, the petition reads. One man tortured so badly he passed out multiple times. Workers only stopped because they thought they had killed him. <laughs> the petition also claims that there have been accusations of sexual assault and drugging of attendees. This is a haunted house you go to, haunted house. You have to sign a 40-page waiver before you go in and create a safe word before you go in. There's been reports of sexual assault at the manor. There's reports that he hires workers with violent histories and sex offenders. It reads, referring to Russ McCamey, who owns and operates the haunted house, he uses needles to inject people with drugs, forces them to ingest pills and other questionable items, which forces them to hallucinate also. <laughs> Attendees can reportedly be subjected to having to pull out their own teeth, having their fingernails pulled off, or even getting a tattoo. Uh, Chris Smith, a 37-year-old who works as a volunteer remotely for McCamey, told USA Today. Somebody tweeted here, uh, somebody named Bree, if anyone actually voluntarily signs up to attend this haunted house, know that I think you are insane. The, this is part of the waiver for McCabe's Banner. And she's got a bunch of stuff highlighted there that you can read that, that's in the waiver. The, uh, the man behind the petition, Frank Towery, claims participants have been forced to eat things, waterboarded, forced underwater, had duct tape wrapped around their heads. He proposes both locations of the haunted house, one in Tennessee and one in Alabama, be closed immediately. Uh, it's merely a crazy haunted house designed to last up to 10 hours. He says, I'm a very straight-laced conservative guy, but here I run this crazy haunted house that people think is torture factory, fetish factory, he said. In order to begin the tour, participants must be 21 years old or older, or 18 to 20 with parental approval, have a completed sports physical and doctor's letter stating you are physically and mentally cleared, pass a background check provided by McCabe Manor, be screened via Facebook, FaceTime, or phone, proof of medical insurance, sign the detailed 40-page waiver, pass a portable drug test on the day of the show. <laughs> anyway, previously there were no safe words, uh, but he changed that. But there's been reports that the torture continues even when people repeat the safe word for several minutes. It's literally just a kidnapping and torture house. It continues, some people have had to seek professional psychiatric help and medical care for extensive injuries. I propose all locations be shut down immediately. Now, here's the thing to me. People volunteer this. They know what they're getting into going in, more or less. Uh, they, uh, any kind of place where you got to sign these kind of documents that go through this kind of uh, uh, background checks and, and physicals and all that, and you still agree to go on and go in there? Whew! You're getting what you get, man. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's what I say. That's, uh, that, that, that's some messed up stuff, but... <laughs> you're, you know, you're an adult. You sign up. I, 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 have, I have no sympathy for anybody that voluntarily goes in there and does that. So, uh, anyway... We gotta do our last set here. I gotta do my last set, I guess I should say, since it's just me. <laughs> All right, this is a new one, uh, fairly fairly new, October seventeenth, from Mister uh, Mister Marilyn Manson. Ha, 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 ha. 
Oh, you crazy girls there, Larkin Poe, uh, doing their version of Black Betty. Very nice uh, at the Pace Studios. Before that, we had Bob O'Reilly by The Who. Uh, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you, The Who. Um, <laughs> which they just put that video out yesterday, uh, although it is from 1978. But uh, they just released it on the official Who channel, the Who channel on uh, the YouTubes. Uh, before that, we had Metallica, for whom the bell tolls, over there in Berlin, Germany, on July 6th of uh, this year. And kicked it off with a brand new one there from Mr. Marilyn Manson. God's going to cut you down the old uh, Johnny Cash tooth. So, uh, great, great stuff, man. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, anyway, it's going to wrap it up, but tomorrow, 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 uh, you'll have the dark table at noon Eastern with Flash and hopefully Grammy. Uh, I'll be on Sunday at noon Eastern with the Blues as per usual and trivia here in the chat, followed up by Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up a big old can of whoop-ass. And next week, the Moose Girls should be back, so we'll have a regular Freakers Bow on that night. Thank you all so much. Have a great weekend. Talk to you later. Peace!